This program is sponsored in part by the Elizabethtown College Summer Scholarship, Creative Arts, and Research Projects. Elizabethtown College. Educate for service. As we saw in the previous episodes, solutions of Einstein's equations of general relativity are simply self-consistent sets of spatio-temporal measurement, force, momentum, and energy on the entirety of the space-time manifold that are satisfy local conservation of energy momentum, the divergence-free nature of your stress-energy tensor. It turns out you can create such solutions which allow for the world lines of observers to loop back around on themselves, called a closed time-like curve. And it can be done because time-like fashion, as it's shown here, such that the observer is always moving locally into his or her future, while globally could be moving towards everyone else's past. One way to do that is by using what's called a wormhole, which connects two regions of the space-time manifold, which are otherwise far apart, in a relatively close fashion. Here's a depiction, artist rendition, of a wormhole mouth in Times Square, connecting a location in the Sahara Desert. And so if you're in Times Square, you step there, and then you're in the Sahara Desert. And if you're in the Sahara Desert, you'd step into the wormhole mouth and be back in Times Square. Besides locations in space, you can actually also connect your wormhole mouths in different places in time. So here's the depiction with a zero second time delay. An object goes in to the wormhole mouth here and comes out here zero seconds later. Here's a two second delay. So the object goes in here and comes out here two seconds later. And of course, we can go backward in time. In other words, two seconds before the object goes into this wormhole mouth, it's coming out of the other wormhole mouth. Wormholes are magic doorways connecting two remote locations. These cosmic sky bridges would allow us to jump across space and travel in time. Fly into a wormhole and you can take a shortcut to another place or time. Closed time-like curves lead to two types of paradoxes, that is, consistency paradoxes and causal loops. Consistency paradoxes are those like the grandfather paradox, where someone goes into the past and kills his grandfather before his father was born, thereby preventing his own birth. Closed causal loops provide for the existence of a something that doesn't have an origin, at least not a dynamical or causal one. For example, as we saw in the excerpt from the movie Back to the Future, Marty McFly enjoys playing guitar 1985. One of his favorite songs to play is Chuck Berry's hit Johnny Be Good, released in 1958. Marty time travels back to 1955 and plays a song at a dance where Chuck Berry's cousin, Marvin Berry, hears the song and calls Chuck to let him hear it. So Chuck Berry got the song from Marty McFly in 1955, released it in 1958, Marty McFly hears it in 1984, time travels back to 1955 and plays it for Chuck Berry to hear. Uh, so who actually wrote Johnny B. Good? No one wrote it in this scenario. As with the other puzzles and conundrums I'm presenting, the paradoxes associated with closed time-like curves arise because our time-evolved bias demands dynamical explanation. That is, our perceptions are formed in time-evolved fashion, so we're predisposed to think dynamically, and therefore we want to understand reality as we experience it. In the context of closed time-like curves, we can imagine paradox-generating initial conditions. 
for example, rolling the ball on trajectory alpha 1 in the Novikov figure. Novikov famously imagined a pair of wormhole mouths he labeled A and B, connected such that if you went in on trajectory alpha 1 to wormhole mouth B, you would come out of wormhole mouth A on trajectory alpha 2, so as to collide with yourself and scatter in these two directions, neither one of which is alpha 1 required that you, for you to have gone into wormhole mouth B to come out of wormhole mouth A and trajectory alpha 2. Thus, you have a contradiction. We can see that in the simple animations here. So now we see we're going to come into this wormhole mouth, and we're going to come out of this wormhole mouth at an earlier time so as to collide with ourselves. But in the collision, now we keep ourselves from following this trajectory needed for ourselves to come out of this wormhole mouth and have that collision to begin with. In other words, we have a contradiction. So we're genuinely mystified as to how nature will respond to that situation when our best dynamical laws say a violation of logic will result. The short answer might be all laws of physics obey the laws of logic. Assuming a phenomena must satisfy the laws of physics in order to occur, all logic violating phenomena are ruled out as being possible. Along these lines, we have Novikov's principle of self-consistency which simply states that local solutions of the laws of physics are only permissible if they lead to self-consistent global solutions. In fact, Carlini et al. in 1995 showed that Novikov's principle of self-consistency actually follows from the least action principle, which is, again, an adynamical global constraint. Einstein's differential equations are actually the Newtonian schema, or dynamical version, of a Lagrangian action. That Einstein's equations are a Newtonian schema formulation of general relativity leads some to view general relativity dynamically instead of in block universe fashion, which then fuels the paradoxes of closed time-like curves. A la Carlini et al., if you rather assume the Lagrangian schema, Einstein's equations are understood as an adynamical global constraint, and one must find a metric and stress energy tensor in all of space-time in order to have a general relativity solution. Thus, if you have a solution of Einstein's equations that permits a causal loop, and there is no reason to believe you couldn't instantiate that solution, for example, it doesn't require a stress-energy tensor that we have no way of producing, then you would just have to accept the fact that not everything has an origin. The belief that everything like a song must have an origin is clearly a bias based on our dynamical experience. But, you say, what about the consistency paradox of the Novikov figure? Exactly how am I stopped from rolling the ball on trajectory alpha 1? Is there a physics police who will arrest me before I can do so? Will I be struck by lightning? As Arndt Zinnius and Modlin point out, it's cheap to simply claim logical impossibility. If time travel entailed contradictions, then the issue would be settled. And indeed, most of the stories employing time travel in popular culture are logically incoherent. One cannot change the past to be different from what it was, since the past, like the present and the future, only occurs once. But if the only requirement demanded is logical coherence, then it seems all too easy. A clever author can devise a coherent time travel scenario in which everything happens just once and in a consistent way. This is just too cheap. Logical coherence is a very weak condition, and many things we take to be metaphysically impossible are logically coherent. Even physicists working in the context of the Bloch universe sometimes falsely believe Novikov's principle needs to be added to Einstein's equations. The problem is they ignore the stress-energy tensor in Einstein's equations. That is, even if the objects introduced to vacuum or empty solution are so small as to not affect the space-time geometry, like the ball in Novikov's figure, Einstein's equations still require the stress-energy tensor everywhere in space-time. Now, this is no problem for small objects following the geodesics of the Schwarzschild vacuum solution, for example. Consequently, we can construct a stress-energy tensor for GPS satellites on geodetic orbits about Earth, per the Schwarzschild vacuum solution. We don't actually have to do that, but it's possible, which then allows us to make clock corrections for the GPS satellites. Otherwise, as pointed out by Neil Ashby in Physics Today 2002, your GPS device would accumulate errors to over 11 kilometers a day. So if, if it is impossible to create a divergence-free stress-energy tensor everywhere in space-time for the geometry and situation under consideration, as it is for the Novikov figure, then the situation violates Einstein's equations and is therefore ruled out by general relativity. 
So we avoid Arzenius and Maudlin's concern because we're not ruling out self-inconsistent situation in the Nabokov figures due to a violation of logic per se. And so when we look at the Nabokov situation, we're left wondering, what's going to stop us from starting this whole process along trajectory alpha one that leads to the self-contradiction? Do we need to invoke an additional self-consistency constraint in addition to the Einstein's equations of general relativity? The answer is no, because the solutions of Einstein's equations have to apply over the entirety of the space-time manifold, and they have to be self-consistent sets of spatio-temporal measurement, force, momentum, and energy. So even if the stress-energy tensor is very small so as not to affect the geometry appreciably by introducing the object on trajectory alpha 1 or not, nonetheless it is in Einstein's equations and therefore has to be self-consistent on the entirety of the space-time manifold, divergence-free. So, when we look at this situation, if we think dynamically, we run into this self-contradiction. But if we rather think adynamically and accord with the all-at-once view, we realize that to have a solution, and the only things that can be instantiated are those solutions of Einstein's equations, then we have to find an entire situation that is self-consistent, like this one. Here we see we have our object coming in on an original trajectory, and it's going to come out here at an earlier time, collide with itself, so as to knock itself into A, so that it could have come out to B to knock itself into A. This is a globally self-consistent solution to Einstein's equations with an everywhere self-consistent stress energy tensor that is divergence free as needed for a solution of Einstein's equations. That is, we're not invoking Nabokov's principle of self-consistency. Rather, since we understand Einstein's equations constitute an adynamical global constraint in the block universe, and the stress energy tensor is a part of Einstein's equations, even in places where it doesn't appreciably affect the space-time geometry, we see that Nabokov's principle is already part of general relativity per the Lagrangian schema. If you want to know what will happen if you keep certain aspects of the controversial precipitating event, say where you are relative to the wormhole mouths and the direction you roll a ball, for example, then it is incumbent upon you to find a solution to Einstein's equations that keep those certain aspects. Escavaria et al. in Fizzerev D. 1991 showed that small changes to the time difference between wormhole mouths can turn a contradictory situation into a self-consistent one. That scenario then allows for the construct of a divergence-free stress-energy tensor as required for a solution of Einstein's equations. In this fashion, we have resolved the consistency paradox resulting from the spatio-temporally local ANSI view of general relativity by adopting the spatio-temporally global all-at-once view of general relativity. We end up turning the original question on its Newtonian schema inquisitor by telling him that if he wants to know what will happen in the Nabokov figure, he will have to construct a general relativity solution that embodies his premises as well as consequences, a la Escavaria et al. So, just as promised, the mysteries of general relativity shown in this and the last episode result from the dynamical Newtonian schema model of physical reality per our anti bias. There is, in fact, nothing wrong with the physics of general relativity, and all these faux mysteries disappear when we ascend to the all at once view per Wilczek's challenge. In the next episode, we will proceed to quantum mechanics, where this story will repeat itself and demand that we proceed further beyond the dynamical universe.